Should you change business venture on the Innovator Visa or Innovator Founder Visa? Well, I've helped clients recently where they wanted to change business venture entirely and even people who wanted to switch endorsing bodies. Now, if you do this, then you would most likely um, require an extension, so a visa extension, and the change would be indicated when you come to the extension point. So there's a section in the extension endorsement letter covering this, and it says the applicants during their previous period of leave with permission and agreement from the endorsing body has changed a business venture and continued to develop this new business. Um, but uh, you could, after that point or after the extension, apply for settlement. Um, you'd then be judged against the second business plan rather than against the first and that you'd be judged both by the endorsing body and then by the home office. So I've helped people switch uh, business venture, but also endorsing body and then apply afresh for the innovator founder visa. And this does usually trigger an inquiry into what your achievements were under the first business plan. So these the people I've worked with haven't worked with, with me for the initial visa and then there's been uh, challenges and then they've come to me and I've helped them resolve resolve those challenges. Well, in the case that I recently dealt with, um, that was all fine. So um, I, again, I hadn't worked with him, but he came to me and we resolved the issue. He started afresh with a new endorsing body, a new business venture as well, and under the Innovator Founder Visa. But of course, prevention is better than cure. So the original business plan um, really has got to be on point. Uh, it should not ideally be too narrow and linked to a single uh, product idea, which is super specific. Uh, some of my clients have mixed consultancy and uh, product businesses where the product is closely linked with the consultancy offering. And this is one way of achieving sufficient flexibility to ensure that you avoid uh, having to switch later on. So if you have you know, a product that's going to be launched but it isn't actually making money, it's not revenue generating by the time you get to the end of the three year period, then you could technically be refused on the basis that you're not quote trading within the uh, meaning that within the definition of the home office. So there is a, a case coming up on this. And I have been involved in this issue. Um, in other words, looking at what the law, what, what the definition is, whether it's an accountancy definition of trading, um, and whether it's whether trading can mean just spending money or whether you actually have to make sales. And currently the Home Office's uh, definition or the way that they interpret this is, is that you do actually need to be making sales as well. So if you have a mixed consultancy business, maybe that corresponds with the way that you're making money already, and then you add on the software com component, then that means that you're less likely to be tripped up on that point. Plus, do remember that although you can work under the Innovator Founder Visa, the work that you do and earn in a personal capacity is not going to count towards that income that's assessed um, under your business. So for your business, you know, the money needs to be coming into your corporate bank account uh, in order to, uh, to count. Money you earn outside of that on your side gig, if you like, as, as an employee uh, is, is, is really not going to be taken into account. I hope that's helpful in looking at some of the considerations. And if you do want help, I'd be very pleased to speak with you. I have a consultation service. You can check me out on the link below. Bye for now.